What's up people, it's DevSage here, and in this video, we'll be previewing my next course about creating your own programming language and compiler from scratch. Whenever you wanna run a program that's written in some language, that program may be interpreted directly, where you can run the program without needing to compile it or transform it into a different language first. But sometimes some languages require you to compile that program into a different language in order to run on that particular platform. Programs written in Java or C++, for example, need to be compiled into machine code or bytecode in order to run. Similarly, TypeScript is a language that needs to be compiled down into JavaScript in order to run. Now, depending on who you ask, some people might say, well, it's technically not compilation, it's more so transpilation, since you're not going from a higher level language to a lower level language, it's, it's more of a lateral move, but I don't know, maybe they're right, maybe they're not, but the concept is the same. For all intents and purposes, TypeScript is a compiled language. We're taking a program in language A and converting it into language B. And if you ever worked with TypeScript, you've most likely ran the TypeScript compiler in order to generate the JavaScript files for it. Well, in this course, we'll be building our own custom compiler. Let's take a peek at what we'll be building. So here I have VS Code open, and we have all the files for our compiler. Let's take a look at this index.sage file Dot .sage is probably an unfamiliar file extension to you because it's made up, it's imaginary. It's the file extension of a programming language that I created. We'll call it sage script. But this file has some code in it. Code that sort of looks like C if you're familiar with that, but no, this is, this is a imaginary programming language. And what we'll be doing is taking this custom programming language, writing a compiler for it, and converting it into TypeScript so that we can actually run it for real. So let's just start from the top and work our way down to try to understand what the intent of this program is. So starting from line one, we have a print statement. So print, printing numbers one through 10. Okay, so that kind of gives us an idea of what's gonna happen. So this program is gonna print one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 10. So that's simple enough, uh, we have let max num equals 10, let current equals one. So we have two variable declarations here and we have a while loop while current is less than or equal to max num. And we have a repeat. So we have this block of the while loop so for each iteration of the while loop. We'll print current and then increment current by one. And we'll keep doing that over and over and over until current reaches max num and then we'll in while and that's it this is pretty straightforward this sage script program will print all the numbers from 1 to 10 using a while loop but obviously we can't run sage script directly so we compile it into typescript first so now let's see the compiler in action so if we open up our terminal here and we run npx tsx compiler .ts. So basically we're just running this file, the entry point of the program, compiler.ts. Let's run it. We'll see some output. I'll go over what all this is in the course, but essentially these are just the different tokens of the program. But at the end we have compiling complete. And what we might notice here is we have this output.ts file. And so this is actually a, a TypeScript file that it's spat out. And it's kind of unformatted right now, but let's say we format it, make it look a little bit prettier. This file looks sort of similar to this index.sage file that we had, just the TypeScript version of it. So we have max num and current. Uh, we have console log printing numbers one through 10, just like we have over here. Uh, we're assigning max num and current, and we have a, a while loop while current is less than max num print current, and then increment it by one. This is what our compiler did. It took an input program in SageScript and spit out a program in TypeScript. And so what that will allow us to do is to go back to our terminal and run npx tsx output.ts. And we have printing numbers one through 10. And then 
we have numbers 1 through 10. So that's kind of a sneak peek of what it is we'll actually be building. Now let's go over the three main parts of a compiler. The three main parts of a compiler are the lexer, or also known as the tokenizer, the parser, and the emitter. The lexer will start from the beginning of the source program and read each character one by one. And as it's reading, it will build tokens out of those characters. A token is the smallest piece of meaningful code in a language. There can be different kinds of tokens. You can have tokens that represent keywords for your language, like let or if or for. You could have tokens that represent mathematical operators like an equal sign token or a greater than token or an asterisk token or you could have a token that represents a variable of some kind these would all be tokens these make up the smallest meaningful pieces of your custom programming language tokens are sort of like words and punctuation in the english language L let's say we have the sentence jack jump over the wall how would you tokenize this sentence? Well, we would start from the beginning and we would read each character one by one and try and look for the smallest meaningful pieces of information. The first token could be the word Jack. Jack is the name of a person. Jack is the vocative. He is the thing or the person being addressed. If we went any shorter, like J-A-C or J-A or just J, well, those words are not meaningful. His name is not J. His name is not Ja or J-A-C. His name is Jack. And so the token would be the entire word Jack. So we might create a token object with the type of noun and the value of Jack. The next token would be the comma. It's punctuation. So we would create a punctuation token for this. The next token would be jump, which could be a verb token. The next one is over, which is an adverb token, the, a definite article token, wall, a noun token, and the last token would be the exclamation mark. It's another punctuation token. So that's how you might tokenize that sentence, and it's the same idea for programming languages. You read each individual character from your input and create tokens out of all that information. Let's say we wanted to tokenize the following Sage script code. The first token would be let, since let is a keyword. The next token would be current, which is a variable or an identifier. So this would be an identifier token. Then would be the equal sign, which is an operator token. And then another identifier token, an operator token for the plus, and then a number token for the one. When the lexer has determined the various kinds of tokens in the program, we then need to make sure that the order of the tokens makes sense. We need to verify that the syntax of the program is correct. You may have a program that has all valid tokens, but does not follow the correct syntax. For example, if I said print hello world, this is valid. You have a print token and then a string token for the hello world, but if you have hello world first and then print, these are two valid tokens, but they're in the incorrect order. So in order to verify the correctness of the syntax, we pass the tokens to the parser, the next step of the compilation process. The parser is responsible for determining whether the tokens are syntactically correct before we transform those tokens into the destination language. If the parser detects an error in the syntax, it can throw an error. Otherwise, when it verifies the syntax is correct, it will move on to the next compilation step, which is the emitter. So once we've lexed or tokenized the source program and ran the tokens through the parser, the emitter will take those tokens and spit out or emit the code for the destination language, TypeScript. It'll write this code out to a file, like we saw earlier with output.ts. And that's a high level of the three main parts of a compiler. And that's what we'll be covering in this course. This course is available for pre-order. Click the link in the pinned comment to pre-order if you're interested. This might be a good side project to add to your resume. Or maybe you're just curious about how things like this work on a low level. Again, the link will be in the pinned comment. Peace.